This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Friday. This is how we do it. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. April 16th, wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who knows how to clean up a paint spill with the best of them, Jerem Jordan. Had an incident last night. The two-year-old, Tate Michael Jordan, uh, poured out uh, about two-thirds of a gallon of paint on our carpet. That sounds amazing. We are selling our house soon, so that's not <laughs> ideal. Um and I'm not taking a different job, just to be clear. Uh, just moving. But anyway, um, well, who knows if there's a million-dollar offer out there. Um, no, but <laughs> two-thirds of a gallon of paint. What color was the paint? Um, like, a, like a light brown. Oh, so boy. It's kind, of, it's kind of the same color as the uh, carpet. Anyway, it took us a while to realize just hot water and a shot back would have done the deal. Okay. And then I'm researching oil base versus water base. But anyways, I think we got most of it up. We're vacuuming at 1030 at night. Kids are asleep. They just sleep through it. So I was like, oh, that means we can like crank up uh, the TV downstairs a little <laughs> louder if we want, right? If the vacuum's outside their doors, but pretty eventful. Um, Tate has been suspended three days without toys. Oh, so, wow. No, just Harsh kidding. punishment. No, without pay. Oh, no, no, he's this morning. I'm like, you're too cute. Yeah. You can't last stay night, mad at a we're, two-year-old. Pretty r- Yeah. We were pretty riled up last night. But it's all good. <laughs> I could tell you were riled up because your Instagram post was just words with the generic color backdrop. My two-year-old just spilled paint all over my carpet. I'm really upset. <laughs> said, no pics. Too mad. Slash shock. My only regret in this whole thing is that I didn't take a photo of it immediately. But, like, I was in shock, like, you in two clusters. You don't want to in the moment, though. Right. Well, but I think you need to because you need to document yeah. you know, next time. Yeah. So, <laughs> fun, fun time at the uh, Jordan house. Take a video of the crispy carpet area so at least you have something to remember. Oh, but, oh, it's not that crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Our crisp Friday show lineup includes a new transfer rule that goes official from the NCAA, Jerem. How does it impact BYU and which transfer will have the greatest impact on BYU? In 2021, former linebacker Isaiah Kafusi joins us to discuss his NFL hopes and how the bowl game performance was borderline miraculous for Mr. Kafusi. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Women's volleyball sweeps UCLA to advance to the Sweet 16, including a 31-29 comeback win in the second set. Taylor Ballard Nixon led the Cougars with 13 kills. BYU's in the Sweet 16 for the eighth time in the last nine years. That is unbelievable. BYU plays number one overall seed Wisconsin tomorrow night, 8 Eastern on ESPN3. This game was moved up from Sunday to Saturday, of course, because the Cougars don't play on Sunday. Ah, uh, yes. Emphasis on the L in UCLA. Oh, nice. <laughs> All Division I student athletes will have a one time opportunity now to transfer and compete immediately beginning with the 2021-2022 academic year. If legislation adopted by the Division I Council is ratified by the Board of Directors, which is that and is anticipated that it will be, the change would uh, make Puka Nakua, among others, for BYU football, eligible to compete immediately. How will that change the approach for BYU football on the offensive side. The NCAA also announces that all sports will return to regular recruiting calendars beginning June 1st. Okay, let's go. BYU softball mercy rules Southern Utah 8-0 in five innings. Riley Jensen, two doubles away now from becoming BYU's all-time leader in that category. She's an all-time player in BYU history. She's amazing. Cruz has won 12 games in a row. Play Utah next Wednesday on the BYU TV app. Abby Minor Alder competes today in the NCAA Gymnastics Championships individual competition on the floor in Fort Worth, Texas. Her shot at becoming an All-American. Good luck to Abby. Number 17 women's soccer hosts Portland tomorrow in the regular season finale on BYU TV and BYU Radio 107.9 FM and the BYU Cougars app. Monday is the selection show for the Women's College Cup. They're going to have what's called a 64-team tournament. Unlike women's volleyball, which had a 48 team tournament in the mm-hmm. uh, The game is uh, going to be at uh, 3 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio, as mentioned. Success for the volleyball team in Omaha, not so much for the Batcats of BYU baseball in the same city. They dropped their series opener against Nebraska at Omaha, 2-1. to one. Easton Walker, another superb performance, 10 strikeouts, allowed four hits over five innings. 10 strikeouts in five innings? 
he just doesn't get much offensive help. That's yeah. been his case the entire season. He needs to bat and just help himself like on a mop court. <laughs> BYU in game two against Omaha tonight, 7 Eastern. You can listen on BYU Radio with Jason Shepard on the call. You think Shep will sneak into volleyball Saturday? If somebody can do it, it's Jason Shepard. <laughs> it's Jason Shepard. Men and women's tennis are in action today and tomorrow. The men host San Francisco, then Utah, and the women play at Santa Clara and San Francisco. Nationally ranked track and field teams for the men's and women's sides at BYU start competition at the Idaho State Invitational. It runs through tomorrow. The Cougars coming off a huge weekend in that last competition, including Michael Bluth. There's money in the banana stand. Clocked a 45.68 school record in the 400 meters, and All-American Haley Folsom Walker posted a career-best 5,525 points in the heptathlon to move up to number six on BYU's all-time list. More than Jimmer had at BYU. Is this a track and field school, Jerem? Volleyball school. (laughs) And a distance running school. (laughs) All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. A transfer nation is now becoming an official thing across the NCAA. We just went through the particulars, allowing all Division I athletes a one-time transfer rule to compete immediately without having to sit out a year. Jerem, do you like what the NCAA has done here with the transfer rule and modifying it, and what it could mean for the future of college sports? This is the rare thing that the NCAA does that I like. Uh, so congrats on that, finally. Took some time. Uh, no, I like this. I do. So what is life? You can change your job whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, you can change a lot in, in your life. Students Why? can transfer schools if they're not feeling something academically. A co- right. A college athlete isn't a professional athlete. They're not getting paid in the same way. NIL is going to help with that, but it's not going to be the same. They're not on, they're, it's not a four-year deal. Scholarships are typically a year-to-year deal, by the way. They just end up being honored most of the time for four years. Don't forget that. I think people think, oh, yeah, you've signed up for a four- or five-year deal. No, 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 it's year-to-year. That's got to be renewed. And then coaches can leave without a penalty. So I do like this. Um, if there's a bad fit or a new coach or bad culture or just you need a new situation, I'm fine with that. It will eliminate a little bit of the old-school thought of, well, just – just suck it up and, and hang in there and fight through. And y- Yes, there will be less of that uh, now with this. But I do like this sort of free agency feel right now that's kind of fun. Um, I'm more new school than old school, I guess, on this. So I, I do like it. I, there will be some BYU athletes that you really like that all of a sudden bounce for a better opportunity, um, and that will happen. But BYU will get guys that change their mind, like Apuka Nakua, who BYU was in the mix to the end. But he chose Washington instead. And then for whatever reason, and he's talked about it on this program, right? Come back home, family here and whatnot, um, and coming with his brother, Samson, pretty cool. This is, this is exciting. I do love, too, that um, you know, most of the leagues are getting away with the interconference rules where you can't go in league. Like we're seeing uh, you know, uh, Masalski from San Diego. He's going up to San Francisco in league. Like, I'm okay with that. You don't have the Norm Chow preventing Michael Wadsworth from coming from Hawaii to BYU situations anymore. I'm on board with this. I know it's a little more chaotic, but I also think it's a little more fun that way. Certainly. This is like, and this will relate to neighborhoods that are apartment heavy. There's so much movement that it's hard to, like, get to know your neighbors. Attrition. Yes. Yes. It's just... That's how it works with apartment complexes. And the coaches are in the same boat. Like now more They're so than ever, yeah. so many Division One coaches are moving on to better opportunities or because they didn't do what the school and the athletic director wanted them to do after two or three years. They're getting the boot. They separate employment, if you will. Correct. Yeah. There's so much volatility within high-level collegiate athletics, not just with players but with coaches and athletic directors that this makes sense why would you not give players the opportunity when their coaches are doing it like how many players actually have the same coach all four years now no it's rare right and, and it creates a, a harder situation for the coaches like if I'm Kalani Stake or Mark Pope and all the coaches every year you've got to be like hey we still good like you're gonna be here okay and, and what is it July 1st this year but it sounds like May 1st is going to be the date um, I'll have to check the specifics of sport by sport, but so or, or spring for the fall sports that they know are you coming back or not? 
Like, are you leaving or not? So, it, again, it will be chaotic, but that chaos will yield some good results too. Like, Puka Nakua can transfer to BYU and play this year. That's awesome, which we'll talk about right now, in fact. Yeah. Top, topic two. Yeah, the scenario is so transient, yes. and it's benefiting BYU here. Okay, let's talk about it. Now that it's official, Washington receiver transfer Puka Nakua can play. What kind of impact will he have? I expect Puka Nakua to be, if not the top receiver for BYU, certainly one of the top two receivers for BYU. Who's the other one? Gunner or Sampson? Gunner. And I think just because of Sampson is who he is, and he told us on the – like, he's the guy that will step in perfectly into that third receiver role and is an excellent blocker and will do anything and everything to get teammates open and run routes so that he can take defenders with them and open up the two main options, Gunnar Romney and Puka Nakua. And Puka is the highlight reel receiver. Samson's more of a gritty, hard work, get it done in the trenches. I don't don't know. Samson made a catch against Colorado on the road a couple years ago that was unbelievable. Oh, and he's made some catches against BYU to win games. No, we don't need to to talk about those particular ones. But I I just think Puka, because he's the highlight reel kid, he's got incredible leaping ability. Which is gnarly for a 6'1", dude. He's got great speed. And I don't think we focus a lot on his speed, but he's got some wheels. No, he's legit. Incredible yeah. hands, doesn't yeah. drop anything. So I like Puka to be one of the top The only two thing he dropped was Washington. For BYU. Yeah, and it didn't feel good for the Huskies. But, again, this transient atmosphere. Washington also dropped the game with BYU. Now with the transfer rule, <laughs> Puka Nakua can play fun. immediately. I love this. Yeah. He told us that he anticipated that this was going to happen. We're not surprised that it did happen. He's going to be a top two receiver, and if Puka can catch forty passes for six hundred yards and five or six touchdowns, that's a great yeah. boost for and, the BYU receiver core. And it might even be more. Yeah, like, he could like. Where's his ceiling? His ce- his ceiling is like eighty and fifteen hundred and ten. Like that's where the ceiling is. I'm not saying he's doing that. Yeah, there are just too many options. I think like for one guy to do that. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he and Gunner, I think, combine for 1,500 and, you know, 12 touchdowns together or whatever. Love right? it. And then what does uh, Samson do? Gravy, yes, right? and then what does Samson do? Yes. But everyone talks – hold on. Everyone talks about gravy like it's a bonus. Gravy is really good on potatoes. In fact, I dare say it, it almost needs to be there most of the time. Okay. It's not a bonus. Okay. It needs to be, like, with it. You know, a 50-50 thing. What do we need? To, do we need to change it to house is, money? Is it house money? Yes, there. I, like, potatoes are good, but I need the gravy. Anyway, <laughs> there's your, you identified the top three guys. I think when the dust settles on the season, those are the top three receivers in any category. Catches, yards, touchdowns. Let's talk about who else is in there, though. Chase Roberts is back from a mission. Love it. He was an All-American at American Fork, put up, like, ridiculous numbers. Four-star recruit. Yep, he's legit, Okay. Neil Pau is Mr. Steady at like yep. number this year, number three. So he's he's in the mix for, you know, the third or fourth receiver kind of deal. Chase Roberts back from mission. We'll give him a year, right? Cody Epps coming off a little bit of an injury, not playing much in spring. Chris Jackson, what can he do? Keanu, Keanu Hill. Hill. And then okay, Ben Criddle has has called this one early, and it's interesting. We'll see if it happens. The next Dax Milne is a kid named Cade Moore, potentially. Wow. Lehigh. Preferred walk on. Okay. In his high school career, he had uh, you know three thousand yards, two hundred seventeen catches, thirty six touchdowns. Senior year, eighty eight grabs, thirteen sixty five and twenty. Like he might be the next Dax Milton type. So I'm very confident about this group. I felt pretty good even pre Nakua brothers, but I feel really good now. Yeah, you should both. feel good about that. And and a tease for a future topic. <laughs> does it even matter who is throwing the ball to them? Like, if you like all three options, does it even matter? The quarterback is inheriting a surfeit of talent. Yes, we learned that him. word in our pre production <laughs> meeting. Surfeit, which is the opposite of dearth. Yes, a surfeit a, of talent. What? It's like a surplus. Smith and Edwards, surplus plus. There are too many good options for whoever the quarterback is, and we haven't even talked about the tight ends, Jerem. Oh, yeah, Let's those throw guys. In those pass catchers and Tyler Algier Isaac and Rex, Lopini Katoa. Dallin Holker. And the homies. This is exciting. It's very exciting. The offense. When are we playing? Hit it! Just kidding. We don't have it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. We don't. We don't know the number. I don't know the one, number. One, two, Seventy-nine. <laughs> Our question of the day. We were just talking about Puka Nakua. Is gravy necessary? 
<laughs> we changed it to house money. Okay? Oh, okay. Samson Nakua is house money for the BYU receiver core. Gravy is so good. Neil Powell kind of feels that way, too. Do you like the new NCAA transfer rule? Why or why not? It can be a little bit of a double-edged sword. Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Blue Cougar J answers on Instagram, quote, meh, it's working in BYU's favor this year, but how would we feel if one of BYU's quarterbacks we become attached to decides to use it next season when he doesn't win the starting job? Yep, it's the risk of this. Sure. It's the other side sure. of it, absolutely. Um, but then you bring someone else in, you know, like that's Mark Pope's dealing with that. BYU's, BYU's – Living on the you know transfer edge, if you will, in hoops, where it's like, all right, Mark Pope inherited an amazing group, did a tremendous job with them to get them to play at their highest level, and BYU was a top 10 type team with Yoli Childs at the end of the year. Pandemic hits. We don't know what was going to happen. You, you uh, have Alex Barcelo, but you bring in Avery and Harms. Awesome. I hope that – I mean, we're probably going to be living this way. It, it probably changes the dynamic of your team every year where it feels more like football may feel like men's hoops more. Well, signing day becomes like, less you, relevant. You like you need, right? Right? <laughs> Great point. You need transfers every year that can play right away. Now, it'll be funny cuz you'll get the one dude who transfers in and you'll be like, "Oh, sweet. He can't transfer out as easily." But the guys that haven't transfers like, "Oh, they could go anywhere and yep. play right away." That is, it's the reality of it all. Oh, what a great year for so-and-so. Oh, we didn't get him on signing day, but let him go on a mission and we'll see what happens when he gets back. And real quick thought along those lines is, do the, does transfer become the new uh, big recruitable thing? Maybe. Like if you're Nick Saban, you're like talking to so-and-so on whatever team that's in the portal suddenly. like It is that, transfer Tinder or before, for coaches. It is. It is. Swipe left, swipe right. Who do you like? Got to be in the portal. That's downloading the app. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, Jerem, just because we have an oh. elite crew, hit it. Countdown to the Wildcats. 142. 142 days away, BYU kicking off the season in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium, the home of the Las Vegas Raiders, against the Wildcats of Arizona. Are tickets on sale today to the general public? I think it might be today. It might have even been yesterday, yesterday? too. Yeah. But how about that, man? How many tickets are they selling? No, it's, it's, today. it's today. Okay. Happy Friday, indeed. I, I want to know the answer to this. Um, this is me talking basically to the control room to look it up and tell me <laughs> because I couldn't do it right in front of me, I guess. How many tickets uh, are going to be, or people are going to be in the stadium? Do we know that answer? I don't think we know that answer quite yet. And are you going to have to show your vaccine card so you can get in? Yeah, state to state, business to business, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, coming up, is there a new leader in the clubhouse for the New York nickname for Zach Wilson? And former BYU NFL, or NFL hopeful, and former BYU linebacker Isaiah Cavusi on his bowl game performance and how it shaped his potential pro football future. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you like goals and winning, you'll like watching BYU women's soccer. Cameron Tucker, Michaela Coulihan, and the homies taking on Portland, who used to be really good at soccer. Saturday, 3 Eastern, on BYU TV. We are live in Studio B on a Friday. This is how we do it with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline from the lovely state of California currently is former BYU linebacker and NFL prospect Isaiah Kafusi. Isaiah, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Man, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're vacationing there in California. And while we're on that topic, how was the couple's getaway to Idaho with Zach Wilson, Matt Bushman, Troy Warner, and all of these significant others? Yeah, it was great. It was great to get out. Uh, Had had a fun time up there in Idaho. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, And, and, you know, just before life gets crazy, we want to just do a quick vacay um, and, and just be able to spend time with each other, have some fun. And it was it was a blast. Um, I looked up the place, Airbnb. It was like 5.15 a night. So did you guys split that divided by four, or did Zach just pay for everything? <laughs> <laughs> Should have made Zach just pay for everything. No. 
uh, luckily, you know, we have a, a, a great friend who, you know, let us stay there for the night who owns it. And so nice. Uh, shout out to Mike for that. But yeah, beautiful spot. Just go check it out. Let's chat later about getting Mike's content. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about those connections. Isaiah Kafusi with us on BYU Sports Nation. It's been roughly three weeks, Isaiah, since your pro day performance. Now that you've had some time to look back on that, how do you feel like your performance in that very highly publicized pro day impacted your pro football aspirations? Uh, I think I did okay. I, I didn't test as well as I had been, um, so I was disappointed in, in, in some things, but uh, that's just kind of the nature of that pro day. You know, there's nerves and uh, th- just so many different factors that go into that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you just go out there, you do your best. You might test, you know, not as well as you had wanted to, but, um, you know, you, I just moved forward, moved on from into the next drill. And so, I thought I did thought, thought I did a great job, you know, showcasing who I am, my skills and my abilities, and uh, really looking forward to just, you know, find, get, getting an opportunity and taking advantage of it. That's kind of one thing that I've always uh, been able to do is just take an opportunity and run with it. What kind of feedback are you getting? Uh, what kind of interest is there in the possibility of you perhaps uh, in the later rounds or as a free agent? Yeah, I've had a lot of interest and in, in, in some good, really good feedback. Um, talked to a number of scouts and teams um, who have mentioned, you know, really good things about my pro day numbers, which I was surprised at. I, I probably was more of a critic of myself than anyone, you know, more critical on myself. And so, uh, you know, had some good feedback and, and have had a number of chats with some teams and um, really just really excited and really confident in, in being able to get an opportunity. What do those teams and scouts like about your game and maybe what do they want you to work on as you try and transition into the NFL? Yeah, I think um, obviously, you know, some of the weaknesses and things that, that I need to work on are, you know, just the speed and the strength. Um, and, and some teams have mentioned, you know, gaining, you know, a little bit more weight uh, and putting on some more muscle and, and, you know, things like that. But, there's also teams on the other side of the spectrum that really like, you know, my speed really like, you know, that I'm a little bit lighter, taller, longer. And so um, those are just, you know, the, the Fred Warners of the game now, I mean, he's changed the game and kind of the linebacker position. And so people really like that, that I'm, I'm similar to Fred that, you know, we move this, you know, similarly. And, um, you know, I was able to learn under Fred. So I, I was able to kind of see how he played and, and adopt, uh, you know, some of the, his play style. Um, obviously he's one of the greatest linebackers in the league right now. And, uh, you know, I always just trying to learn, you know, from him and kind of just get like tidbits here and there of, of how he plays. So that's, I think something that plays to my advantage. It's fun to see what BYU can do at the next level, Isaiah, because a few years ago, Taysom Hill, undrafted free agent, but now he could be the starter in new Orleans a guy like Fred Warner, like you mentioned. And then, of course, the ascension of Zach Wilson is one of the greatest sports stories of the last decade for BYU football. So what's it been like to see and, and hope to take advantage yourself of this like positive momentum uh, wave from BYU of, listen, Fred Warner might be the best linebacker in the league. Zach Wilson's going to be the number two pick. Taysom Hill's maybe going to be a starter in the league. What is that like as a player trying to make your own uh, mark from BYU? Well, it's very encouraging. Um, in, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, just to see guys and you know, like Danny Sorensen, who, you know, undrafted special team or works his tail off. And, and now he's, you know, established himself as a great football player. And, uh, you know, guys like Taysom, you know, I, I was able to see Taysom kind of go, you know, attack these hurdles that were just thrown at him. And, and you know, there's the, the BYU guys in the league, I think, have created a great reputation for just BYU in general, uh, kind of the, the men who, that we are and also the football players, you know, people around the league know who they're going to get when they draft or when they bring on someone who's played at BYU. So just very encouraging and uh, really excited to just, you know, get out there and, and give it my all and uh, just see where it goes. You talked about your physical attributes. One of the attributes that's often highlighted for you uh, is the leadership and the ability for you to create great culture and help the locker room out. Was that something that scouts and teams knew about and discussed with you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you know it was one of my great, one of my greatest uh, achievements and honors was 
you know, being selected team captain. So that's always come up and, um, and, and just was just very blessed to be a part of that team and, and be selected team captain by my teammates. Um, I've just always tried to do what's right uh, and, and do what's asked of me. And so I think naturally when you do those two things, you'll just, you know, naturally maybe become a leader and you're naturally in the, in the light, but um, it, it has come up. And I think teams are very pleased with, with that. Former BYU linebacker, NFL hopeful Isaiah Kafusi with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's say you're in a job interview with any of the 32 NFL teams and naturally you're doing it over Zoom and they say, okay, if we give you a contract, what type of player are we going to get? How do you respond to that question? Yeah, that's a great question and, and I have been asked that and I think I respond – by this, I just say, look, you're going to get one of the smartest football players out there uh, and not necessarily the smartest. Uh, and I'm not going to come in and be the smartest f- football IQ, but I'm willing to learn and willing to understand and, and be coachable and teachable. Uh, and then I'm also a football player that just makes plays. Um, I, I find a way to get to the ball, whether that's, you know, creating, you know, forcing a fumble, recovering a fumble. Uh, you know, interceptions, sacks, whatever, you know, I just find a way to get to the ball and make plays. And uh, that's one thing that I feel like I'm just naturally good at. And, and one thing that I've also had to work really hard at. Did you get asked anything weird? Cause traditionally with like the NFL <laughs> comment, it's like, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be like any, anything <laughs> crazy like that? And not that I can recall that all my interviews have been pretty, pretty easy. Uh, but I, I have heard those weird questions that they <laughs> ask, like, Try, try, I don't know if it's the psychology of you know how you would answer, but I've, I've heard of them. So what kind of tree would you be? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> I kidding. love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, fantastic stuff from Isaiah Kafusi. I do want to ask your opinion about what's left behind at BYU <clears throat> while you're still somewhat connected to the program because – you played directly with a bunch of the guys that are going to come back and be the core of that BYU defense. So how would you explain what makes up the BYU linebackers for 2021? What do they have in the tank still? Yeah, I I think uh, the best is yet to come for for those guys. I think, um, you know, the last few years, what we've seen from the linebacker core has been great, but I think that the best is is to come. Um, Really experienced room with a great coach, you know, I know coach Clune is going to do fantastic things with that linebacker group. And, uh, you know, just, just the way he coaches and the way he's able to connect with us in a, in a way that we're not really used to, you know, it's, he's kind of a, a different coach, you know, and just kind of brings in a different style. And so uh, really excited about those guys, you know, Peyton Keen and kind of leading the way. And, and my brother, you know, has come a long way and, and really excited about him, you know, and, and, can't wait for him to recover because I know his potential and so uh really excited you know I know Ben Bywater's been getting a little bit of reps here and there his shoulders feeling pr- pretty good and uh Drew Jensen so you know I, I think there's I, I think you know the legacy of the linebacker you know coming through BYU I think it'll continue with these this group that's the one position at BYU the most where I go I don't even need to know the names. They're going to be awesome. Like I, I every yeah. year the linebackers are good, which is fantastic. Um, but we do like to know the names as well. Okay, you you went through a gnarly situation where you you almost didn't even play the bowl game because you were so banged up. How did you how did you get through that? And then how you doing now, man? Yeah, I, uh, great. I feel really good. Um, that was you know one of the most interesting things. You know. I, after the San Diego state game, I was feeling really good and had, had a little hip flexor injury, you know, here and there it would just kind of seize up on me after games. And I would just do treatment throughout the week and be totally fine. But after that San Diego state game, you know, I woke up and I thought everything was fine. I woke up in the morning and I couldn't walk. I couldn't extend my leg. Um, it, it was really, it was crippling. I mean, my leg was just like sewn in a certain position. I couldn't extend it or, or bend it. And so it uh, was really weird when in the training room and luckily, you know, I, I, the, tra- the training room and the, the weight room staff, you know, did a great job of helping me recover. Um, went, went through some excruciating pain, I think, to really get it back um, that fast and that, you know, was able to play in the bowl game, which I was even on game day was doubtful. Um, but 
it was a miracle, I think, and, and really was very fortunate. Um, that game kind of, you know, kind of, there was a sequence sequence of events that that game, you know, ended up my agent ended up being there and, and, you know, I had kind of spotlighted me that game and I was very fortunate to be able to, to play in that game and, and to eventually, you know, go out on, on a win in my last career game. So was lucky enough to, to play in that. Eight tackles, second most on the team in the game. Let's go. Yes, Isaiah Kafusi on BYU Sports just, Nation. Just find a way. Absolutely. And that's what you said earlier in the interview. You just, if you're given an opportunity, you'll make the most of it. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for whatever opportunities are granted to you uh, through the NFL draft. Go get it done, man. Great to have you with us. Appreciate it. Love you guys. Love Cougar Nation. Always. Isaiah Kafusi on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. After the game in uh, Boca Raton, I chatted with him. I was like, dude, like, how hurt were you? And he talked about that, and it was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, he couldn't walk. Doubtful for the game on game day. Yes. So going into the game, I was told and reported on Cam Down to Kickoff that he was doubtful. Wow. And then he plays. Eight tackles. And has eight tackles. Like, that's one of the more heroic um, – you know, performances from a BYU player all year. And I love the insight there that his agent was at the game, just so happened to be spotlighting him, and it worked out. Yes, it did. That's amazing. That's awesome. I hope it works out for him because he is an asset in any locker room he goes yeah, to. Yeah, give him a chance. Yeah. Okay, coming up, who's the most under-the-radar guy from BYU in the NFL draft? Is it Isaiah Kafusi? Plus, has order been restored within the sports universe now that BYU beat UCLA in something prominent? <laughs> This is BYU Sports Nation. Eight, clap that. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Check out BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. Social media twist take on uh, BYU Athletics. Check it out on the BYU Sports Nation social media platform. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation, and it is time to whip it. Cougar Whip Around, presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. What was the most impressive thing about women's volleyball sweep over UCLA in the second round of the NCAA tournament? Staving off seven set points in set number two. BYU was down 23-18 in that set, came back to take it. In fact, they erased... uh, they were done 24 21. Well. Another deficit late, even later. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, just seven set points for UCLA. They couldn't close it out. That to me was the most impressive individual piece of that sweep. Uh, 16 blocks in three sets. That's the most since 2015 for BYU. So, just blocking everything. UCLA hit 115. Listen, you know who brings it in the NCAA tournament? BYU. They always win a game in the NCAA tournament. In fact, most of the time, it's at least two. So, big challenge with Wisconsin tomorrow. But. It's house money Not really. against house Wisconsin money. because BYU is in the Sweet 16 again. Eighth time in the last nine years. Amazing. It's incredible. Did BYU sweeping UCLA make you feel better about the athletic relationship between the Cougars and Bruins? I want to act like it's no, but it's yes. <laughs> it's yes. Of course it is. It's always good to beat UCLA for the Conference of Champions. Right, Bill? Oh, my goodness. Has what, what, would, what, would, been... what would Bill say about last night's loss to BYU and women's volleyball? This is the youngest team in the history of athletic competition at UCLA. That's course, an excuse, naturally, Bill. naturally, BYU would win this, please. William. Come on, William. <laughs> Bill Walton's been on the set, by the way. Fun fact. Yes, He's he been has. on the tour of the building. He even wore these big blue goggles. How about that? If you I smell remember them, Kaylin Ballard Nixon if, flying 47 inches <laughs> for one of the greatest spikes in the history of the game. If you smell the blue goggles, you smell like the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Kennedy Eschenberg is and the something great else. wall of Brigham. <laughs> yes, indeed it was. <laughs> okay, is there a bigger cheerleader of women's volleyball and just BYU sports than Jack DeMooney? Watch I, this. Yeah. Okay, so but, Jack, so, if, if you missed it... I, I'm not. I'm not sure what he's doing there, Jerem. He's clapping. He's. You can hear him, right? It's, and it's. He must have. Re, he must have rewound it because I don't yeah. think he wouldn't watch the match point live. Oh, whoa. The kick, the he's gonna kick pull a hamstring. Oh, 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 Jack. Oh, he's got a big dog too. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that's funny. Yeah. It, at first, it like starts like. Is he gonna do the haka? Nope. He's just clapping. He's got. He's got to work he's, a little bit yeah. on that. You know. Yeah. 
<laughs> he and, listen, he and Jason Ayu literally would go dancing. I can't remember the name of the place. No, the, the double fisted punch forward back in the day. <laughs> I didn't realize that was uh, Jack, a cheerleader you, movement. You teach us. You can look on YouTube at Spencer's dance moves as well. And he's clapping like this. What is it? And, like, yeah. A, a straight clap. So when is, I was in junior high and high school, I chased around enough cheerleaders to know that it's this type of clap. Oh, like real, yes. real firm in there? Yeah. <laughs> like because a regular clap, yeah. 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 Anyway. I married a former cheerleader for crying out loud. Yeah, there's the classic. Yeah, it's that, that clasp clap. So we got to work on some things. But no, there's not a bigger BYU like fan than Jack well, Mooney. And he's like 6'3", so he is the biggest He's the uncle to every BYU athlete, right? Which is um, scientifically inaccurate, <laughs> but fun. Jerem, a group of New York Jets fans are trying to gain some momentum for a new nickname featuring Zach Wilson. Wall Street Wilson, is that better than Broadway Zach? Yeah. I like Wall Street Wilson. I think it is, but we're not there yet. Just because it's better doesn't mean it's good. We've also heard Zach's Fifth Avenue. Yep. Right? That was one I heard this morning talking to a Jets fan, radio dude in Houston, but yeah. Wall Street Wilson? Yeah. He's money! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it depends what stock it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dogecoin. I walked through a GameStop yesterday. Yeah, Dogecoin. I was like, should I make, should I sell my 20 bucks right now? Cryptocurrency. And make yeah. Plus 300%. I'll take it. A new dinosaur was discovered uh, in, in China. We'll get to that in a second. First. Okay. Uh, more impressive. BYU softball, 12 game win streak or the 54 homers in 36 games? That's unbelievable. 54 home runs, nine over the last three games, but. It's we said this yesterday. It's so hard to win a bunch of games in a row yeah. in softball and or baseball. It's because of how delicate and weird the game can be at times. The 12 game win streak is unbelievable. And it includes a sweep of a nationally ranked team. So there's some validity to it. It's 54 homers, man. 50. Like homers. like winning is the point of the game, but the means to that end pretty impressive. 54 homers, baby. Run home, Jack. Run home, Jack. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy, you just said it. New dinosaur discovered in China. Small flying dinosaur with opposable thumbs. So it can text fast. Mm-hmm. With the discovery of the monkey dactyl. <laughs> How long until the monkey dactyls are taking over Jurassic Park? Now, this is, the, and we're showing a photo. It's kind of gnarly, right? Well, it's a new I arboreal like- Darwinopterian pitosaur. It's uh, the <laughs> oldest of post stub and fossil record, Gerald. Yes, thank you for that. It's like a little frog. I feel bad for the frog. Anyway, uh, Fast and the Furious 5's director said that they've had talks about a Jurassic Whoa. World Fast and the Furious what? crossover. Stop it. To which one of our friends texted us this morning, there's a real Sharknado vibe there. <laughs> But it would be done way better. <laughs> this sp- I would love that. That'd be so fun. Now, this conversation spurred at one point this morning in, okay, what animal should a cougar cross with to make like this? <laughs> what would be the ultimate combo? Incredible. And I was thinking, man, like an eagle and a cougar. Oh, like an eagle a, and a, a cougar? Kugel? A co- <laughs> Dude, a cougar? <laughs> Look out, Utes. The cougar's coming at you. A cougar and a, a T-Rex, <laughs> like if we're going the dinosaur route. Cause Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, more conversations about gravy, dancing, and monkey. Di- no, uh, a stat that is elite in our Rise of Shadow. Mm-hmm. Plus, under the radar today, but drafted in two weeks, which BYU player is most likely to be saying that after the NFL draft? This is BYU Sports Nation. Celebrate, ladies! Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Saturdays, 2.30 Eastern on BYU Radio. Steve Bale and I go over the top, baby. We don't go off the block. We go over it. This week we chat with Felipe Gibrito Fajeda. Fun conversation with him and Sean Olmstead as the Cougars prepare for the MPSF tournament next week in Provo. You'll be a busy man within the confines Six and three. of the Smithfield House. I, listen, I get paid to do this. Yes, you do. I'm ready to go. Yep. Uh, this is basically your life every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Feels sem- like it in the spring. This semester. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Welcome back to the show live from Studio B. Our next segment presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Yeah, no kugels no discussed co- listen, in uh, no, this segment. No kugels allowed here. 
In a piece recently from The Athletic that talked about under-the-radar guys yep. who helped their draft stock with their pro day performances, a few BYU names were mentioned, notably BYU's Chandon Herring, Kyrus Tonga, and Zach Da. Jerem, if it's not one of those three, for you, who is the most under-the-radar BYU football draft prospect? Matt Bushman. Because he didn't play last year. So he's off the radar, not even under it. He's just out, right? Uh, towards Achilles in August, uh, you know, just a week before the season. It was uh, super sad. But he looked good and did well on Pro Day. Uh, he's going to ride that Zach Wilson wave as well as one of the receivers that caught from him there. I think he was, uh, you know, he was NFL bound in some capacity prior to the injury. And uh, supposing that he's equal to or hopefully better, uh, you know, without school and training and, and getting recovered from that, that he can be an NFL receiver. Todd McShay was one of the first to say, oh, yeah, he's an NFL receiver in the 2019 season. Yeah, he never drops anything. Honey hands. In fact, we told Todd McShay that phrase. Yes, honey hands. Hopefully Todd uses it on day three coverage on <laughs> ESPN, <laughs> drops a honey hands or something. But I, th- I think it's Matt, and I don't think he's alone. I think there are several guys under the radar that – Although they may not be drafted, and we'll see how many are drafted, at least one, two, three, I don't think four, but maybe, are drafted day three, there are, there's some real talent there. You don't go 11-1 and one with scrubs. You just don't. If it's not Matt Bushman, it's the guy that has built a legacy on being underappreciated, and now he's still under the radar. It's Dax Milne. I think Dax Milne is an NFL receiver. He can be a Danny Amendola. He can be a Wes Welker. He can be a uh, Hunter Renfro. Like, Dax Milne is that capable of a receiver. In fact, I think Dax, if he played for Clemson with Deshaun Watson, that he would have been Hunter Renfro, yeah. right? He's that type Bigger of receiver. Spotlight. He might even be a better receiver than Hunter Renfro. I think his skill set is incredible. He's underappreciated. So he's not going to the Raiders. We know he's that. He's under the radar still. And I expect him to sneak in there with uh, a seventh, or sixth, seventh round draft pick, and and hopefully it's to the Jets. I know you said that's a cute idea. It totally is. It's very. Cute. I love that idea of hey, yeah, bring in Zach's most trusted commodity in college and just see what happens. It's not guaranteed to make the team, but let's see what he can do with Zach Wilson in New York. It's cute as a button. Yeah. No, the idea of fellow BYU guys playing together is great. That's awesome. If they don't, whatever. Yeah, Dax thrives in this role of. Under the radar. like He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest. But he just makes plays. He brings it every single game. Every single rep. That's what Dax Milne brings to the table. And so, I like it. That sounds nice to me. Right? NFL scouts, you, GMs, you watching, listening? <laughs> yeah, because Kairos Tonga is not under the radar, per se. No. Like, he's too big <laughs> to be under the yeah, radar. Yeah, it was interesting that he showed up as an under the radar. It's like, ah. Chandon Herring and Tristan Hodge, yeah. Like, because yeah, they, Zach Daw for sure. Zach Daw for sure. Yes, Zach Daw had a tremendous pro day as well. That's awesome. I'm interested to see. Yeah, this is, and, and we talked about it. Listen, the, the story of the draft is Zach Wilson, but there are also other stories to, uh, of note, and uh, Chris Wilcox yeah. as well. Was Chris too fast so that now he's not under the radar anymore? Correct. He's not under the radar. 4 3 1, like that. That's like, oh, bling. Under, under the radar. So, like, you're in a sub or a plane, I guess, and it just doesn't catch you, right? Ooh. Yeah. I did. What's your favorite ra- uh, you know, submarine movie, by the oh, way? That, oh, that's a great tangent question. Oh, man. This is a tangent show. Probably U571. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Hunt for Red October's mine, although I did watch Das Boot, uh-huh. the German one. That's one of, like, the top 100 movies, isn't it? Yes, it is. IMDb. I've seen 99 of those top 100. <laughs> we can talk yes. about the one that I haven't yes. seen later. Dax Milne is my submarine guy for BYU, and Matt Bushman is yours. Matt Bush, Yeah, Matt Bushman. He's like, Matt, Matt Bushman guy. would have been on the radar. Oh, this just in uh, from Nathan Benz. After researching plenty of dinosaurs, the best combo I could find would be a cougar raptor. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a cougar. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we're going dinosaurs. So much randomness. Yes. I love it. Like, Chandon Herring and Tristan Hodge are interesting prospects at guard mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. They're definitely off the radar, but you're on the radar when you're attached to Zach Wilson. That's a thing. And there were some guys And that they're good individually, but... Maximize that on pro day. Jump on the Zach train, yep. honestly. Like, yep. all these guys, to some degree, especially on the offensive side, have done amazing things. 
But they're, they're on the coattails of Zach Wilson, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It will get you a look that you didn't get before. Yeah. In all these Zach Wilson highlights, you know who's being seen? The receivers, the running backs, and the linemen. So it's interesting to see if they will get an opportunity. I think they will. It's just whether they're drafted. Who was it? Was it uh, Mina Kimes that was tweeting at Mike Golick Jr. like, okay, we're watching all these Zach Wilson highlights, but I just keep watching the offensive line. Yes. Yes. Incredible no, stuff. Ride that wave, man. Let's go. I've been riding Spencer's uh, you know, wave here for eight years. <laughs> Coming up, do you like the new transfer rule? And women's volleyball, you missed it earlier or last night, doing something truly tremendous. And we're going to celebrate it even more in our Rise and Shout Out. This is BYU Sports Nation. Cougar. BYU Sports Nation's Rise and Shout Out is presented by Mountain America Credit Union. Guiding you forward. BYU Sports Station, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Download the pod. Subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, do you like the new NCAA transfer rule? Why or why not? Brian Buss on Twitter says, I like it. Gives the athlete one free exception to find a better fit without suffering a year without playing. Plus, he eliminates coaches from saying you can go anywhere but that school. Yeah, and most leagues have taken that away. Um, in ter- and, and what that doesn't mean you can't go to that school. It just means you wouldn't have a scholarship. That's what happened with Michael Wadsworth here um, at BYU from Hawaii, but not BYU Hawaii. They cut athletics. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Nate Paskin on Twitter. It'll be hard to see the list of players leaving BYU every year as they seek a better place for themselves, but I think it's extremely fair. Players get promised things all the time during recruiting, and sometimes things change. Like a coach. This way they get their extra shot. Yeah, I, I think that it is necessary. I don't think it's, like, good or nice. I think it's necessary. Sure. Right? Aaron Brady, I love the rule. If coaches can leave at any time, why not the athletes? Furthermore, yep. the mandatory one-year sit-out is not consistently applied and appears to only work for big schools, but not smaller ones. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like more evidence on that, but um, interesting. Yeah. In response, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from Jared Smith on Twitter. Everyone loves what they think will benefit them. BYU is gaining productive players. If BYU were losing quality production, I wouldn't be as thrilled, I'm sure. And the jury's still out on that, right? It, like, just happened. Um, which, by the way, during the show, uh, Woj Bomb from Adrian Wojnarowski of uh, ESPN on the NBA front. So Ryan Smith, BYU grad, owns the Utah Jazz. Qualtrics. Billionaire, right? Dwayne Wade has a uh, minority ownership stake in the Utah Jazz now. Sometimes Ryan Smith... You know, plays a little pickup in the annex. Will Dwayne Wade be in the annex playing pickup? Will Dwayne at some Wade point? be in attendance at a BYU basketball game? Maybe the Gonzaga game with Ryan Smith? That could be fun. That would be fun. So right? that's kind of cool. I like that. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward. I'm giving it to the Kugel. <laughs> <laughs> and we have another one as well. Yes, women's volleyball in Sweet 16, just awesome. Um, eighth time in nine years, sweeping UCLA. You know, get, getting one for the men's basketball team and the men's volleyball team from over the weekend. And uh, it, it, just think about that. Sweet 16, man. BYU men's hoops has been twice ever. Eight in nine years. And within those eight trips, two trips to the Final Four and a national championship appearance. It's not just getting to the Sweet 16. I, I continue to say, and mostly joke, until Tom Homo told you, Something after the Wisconsin game in jest <laughs> to me. This is a volleyball school, man. It's an all-sports school. I kid. But, like, the volleyball here is unbelievable. So credit to Heather Olmstead and Johnny Neely and David Hyatt and that entire staff of just getting these ladies ready every year. Uh, they get Wisconsin tomorrow, the number one overall seed. But because it's BYU women's volleyball, there's absolutely nobody who doesn't think BYU can't win that match. They could win that game. If they don't, you know amazing season into the Sweet 16 again. Uh, we've said it a few times already, but let's just make it official with our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yes, BYU women's volleyball has gone to eight Sweet 16s in nine years. Are you comprehending this yet? It's amazing. It's a remarkable run. It's amazing. They deserve this run. Good luck to show. the ladies. Yes. And, and beat Wisconsin. And the Sunday play thing, uh, you know, happened. Moved up to Saturday. Yes, accommodating BYU. I like it. <laughs> Religious talk. It's convenient for us, baby. Our thanks to today's guest, Isaiah Kafusi. Sorry, Dennis Pitta ran out of time. Conversation continues online.
For Jeremiah, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Luis Lemus. We'll see you tomorrow for BYU Women's Soccer. Senior Day, 3 Eastern against Portland on BYU TV. Go Cougs. Go Cougals. Go Cougs.